Knowing chord patterns is one of the fastest ways to make your sight reading faster. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to share three of those chord patterns with you so that you can get to know them and make your sight reading 10 times faster. We're going to go through several real musical examples so that you can see these chord patterns in action. And I'm not just going to show you these chord patterns and then leave you on your own. I want you to make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm also going to show you exactly how to master these chord patterns so that they truly do make your sight reading 10 times faster. Hey piano people, I'm Ashley. Welcome to Ashley Young Music Studio. You're about to learn how to practice a whole lot smarter, not harder. Let's dive in. The first chord pattern that's going to make sight reading 10 times faster is closed broken chords. And you can see here in the Moonlight Sonata, we have closed broken chords in the right hand. closed broken chords is that we have separate notes that are close together and if you were to clump those notes together at the same time they make a chord they're closed because they are close together and this is going to make a little bit more sense when we go over one of the other chord patterns later in the video now when you see these three notes in the music of the moonlight sonata one of the biggest mistakes that i see adult piano players make is that they think of all of these notes as being completely separate. And so every single time they go to a new measure, they're reading individual notes. And this ensures that their playing and their sight reading is super, super slow. But if you're able to see these closed broken chords and lump the notes together as one chord, it's going to make your sight reading significantly faster because you're not looking at individual notes anymore. You're looking at a chord pattern. Okay, and so you can see in the Moonlight Sonata, if you look at the entire score, basically the entire piece is made up of these patterns. And so every single measure, if there's 12 individual notes, but they can be clumped together into groups of threes, all of a sudden you have four chord patterns to look at instead of 12 individual notes. Closed broken chords also come up in the left hand of the Mozart K545. You can see my left hand here is going to be playing three notes in a pattern Now, same thing as the Moonlight Sonata. Most adults will see these notes and they'll start to read these as individual notes. And that's going to ensure that the left hand stays slow and clunky. And it just makes it a lot harder to sight read because you're overwhelmed by the amount of notes in the left hand. But in this case, we can clump four notes together. This is an Alberti bass pattern. And we can clump four notes together to form a closed chord. Okay, so now all of a sudden, my left hand does not have eight individual notes per measure. It really just has two chords. And the more I can clump those notes together and think of this left hand pattern as being broken chords, the easier it's going to be for my brain to remember these notes and for my hands to be able to play them. The second chord pattern that's going to make sight reading 10 times faster is out of order broken chords. Now you can see in the Chopin Nocturne in B flat minor, my left hand is going to be playing broken chords that are really spread apart and the notes are out of order. So they're not necessarily going like root of the chord, third of the chord, fifth of the chord. They're mixed up and they're very open because they're spread out. But Similarly to all of the examples we've already gone over, if we were to take all of these individual left hand notes and clump them together, it forms one chord. So let me play the first measure for you. If I were trying to sight read this, or even if I were trying to learn this piece, and I were looking at individual notes, it's gonna be really hard because there's a lot of notes. Here in this first measure, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 left-hand notes. And that's a lot for my brain and my fingers to remember. But let's look at the first group. If we clump all of these together, it actually, we see that the Fs are repeated. We see that the B flats are repeated. This is just a B flat minor chord, which makes sense because the key is in B flat minor. Let's look at the second half of the first measure. All right, this one's a little bit more complicated. We've got our B flat, we've got our F, A. This is actually going to be an F7 chord with a little passing tone in there. 
And so you can see, we can clump these notes together and all of a sudden, instead of having to read one, two, three, four, five, six individual notes, I start to think of them as a unit and that becomes a lot easier for my brain to remember. I also see something really similar in the Brahms Rhapsody number no. two in the C section. Right there. And you can see in the left hand, if I were to take all of these notes, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, there's 12 left hand notes that all separately are so confusing, but this measure can be broken up where if I take one, two, three, four, five, six, the first six notes, it makes a B flat major chord. If I take the next three notes, it makes a B diminished chord. And then the next three notes, probably the beginning of a C sharp minor chord, we take into account the right hand, maybe an A chord. Either way, it's three chord patterns as opposed to 12 random notes. When you see these out of order broken chords, you want to try to clump the notes together. And what I like to do is just take as many notes in the measure as I can until they start to change, right? So here for the first six notes, we only actually have three notes if we look at the notes that are repeated because my D from down here is actually right here. My B flat is right here. So this is a B flat major chord. And then once the note starts to change, then we have to start to consider a new chord. But looking at these as blocked starts to help you see those chord patterns, which makes it a lot faster. If you're enjoying this tutorial, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the other free tutorials that I put out on a weekly basis. Comment below. Let me know what you find helpful and grab the link of this video and share it with a friend or with a group of adult piano players so that they too can learn how to sight read 10 times faster. The third pattern that's going to make sight reading 10 times faster is open chord jumps. Now this happens in the famous Nocturne in E flat major by Chopin. see what I mean by open chord jumps is that I have all of these different chords that I'm jumping to. And in this case, it's mixed with single notes and then chords. Now, if I were to look at all of these very separately, which is what a lot of piano players do, the left hand stays really slow and it's also really hard to get any sort of speed or fluidity. But when I look at the first three chords or the first three groups of notes and I clump those together in the first measure, you can see, again, it's one chord because I'm just playing E flat, G, B flat, and those two are repeated. So it's just an E flat major chord. So this first beat of measure one, while it's three separate chords or notes that I'm playing, it's actually just forming an E flat major chord. And the same is true for almost every single beat in this Chopin piece. And so instead of looking at three individual chords, I'm going to now think of this one beat with these three individual parts as just being an E flat major chord. That's going to help me memorize it. That's going to help me make sense of it in my brain. And it's going to help me get there a lot faster when I'm practicing and sight reading it. I also have open chord jumps in the Brahms Intermezzo Opus 118 number two. You can see if I just play the left hand, mixed with chords. Oops, playing some wrong notes there. But you can kind of see. Now I'm going to play with the right hand so you can see. So I have chord in the left hand, and then single note, single note, chord, single note, single notes, chord, chord, single notes, chord. Now, this one is almost a mix of open chord jumps and out of order broken chords, but you can see that I'm jumping around playing single notes and also chords. Now, if I just look at the left hand by itself, it's going to be really confusing, especially if I take those single notes and think of them as all individual. But again, if I clump them together, they form chords. And same with the chords mixed with the broken notes. If I just play a chord, a single note, a chord, a single note, it seems like there's a lot going on. But if I mix my chords with my single notes, it's actually just broken chords split up into more than one beat. And so the same thing applies here. I can think of this as a unit instead of thinking a chord and a single note, a chord and a single note, they are both units. 
Now, after going through those examples, you might already be able to see why this is so useful for sight reading and how it's going to help you get 10 times faster. But let's talk about it really quickly. When you're trying to sight read a piece, if you want to be able to open up a piece of music and just dive in and play it at a high level quickly, you have to be able to recognize as many patterns as possible. And because music is full of chords, Chord patterns are one of the best patterns that you can work on memorizing to get faster. When you're stuck in that phase of looking at individual notes, you stay very slow and you almost never get to that point of playing with freedom and fluidity. When you start to be able to look at a piece of music and see six notes, and you can instantly decipher that those six notes are actually just C, E, and G, and they make up a C major chord, you move beyond the individual notes. Your brain is faster, which means it can send faster signals to your hands, which means your hands can play with more freedom and more fluidity. This allows you to understand what you're doing in a piece of music way faster and on a much deeper level before your hands even reach the keys. In other words, you get way faster at sight reading. I go a lot deeper into this topic in a free class that I recently taught. And in this class, I give you three simple steps that you can take to make your sight reading so much faster with less wrong notes and with that freedom and flow. If you want to grab that free class, I'll link it in the description and also right here on the end screen.